when you're sailing, what's the, what's the normal day like? Uh, you have some things that are routine and some things that are out of routine. So, routine things are uh, uh, your meals. You have a breakfast at whatever time and then you have a dinner, which are like two big meals. Uh, you need to do some navigation, which can happen only when the sun is in certain positions. So, that takes up your time. Then you have to do some, uh, you know, if there is any HF uh, schedule, uh, then you log into the HF and you listen for weather information or you chat with your other entrants. Uh, so these are the routine things. Other than these, uh, any out of routine things are you know trimming your sails. Uh, if the wind picks up, you have to take a reef, or you know you have to do your tactics, figure out where you want to be next, uh, or make some repairs. So these are the non-routine things. Uh, and you sleep whenever you can, and you try to get as much sleep as possible. So yeah. Sleep at night? Or is it like no, you sleep throughout the day. You sleep whenever you get time. So it, it's not so as if the boat stops sailing at night. So at night also every 15-20 minutes you get up and check if the boat's direction has changed, if um, uh, you know uh, you need to uh, reduce sail, put up more sail or uh, things like that. I was uh, doing a lot of uh, meditation and uh, in fact I overcame a lot of my problems just by focusing on uh, breathing. So when I had breathlessness or you know some stressful times, I would just focus on my breath and first get myself all right and then deal with the problem. So about the sites that I saw, yeah. I'll tell you the interesting sites. I was stuck in Aden, I told you. Yeah. Uh, the sea was very bioluminous in there. So if you do the dishes, we do it with seawater, hmm. your dishes start glowing. Yeah. If you urinate into the toilet bowl, yeah. uh, it starts sparkling, you know. And then uh, we were anchored um, about let's say 100 meters from the jetty and to go to the jetty we used to have a small dinghy boat, rubber dinghy. We used to row and at night when you row, uh, you know when the oar goes in water and comes out, it's like it's scooping out uh, huge bulbs of light. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then I remember once we were sailing off uh, Chagos or something and on the horizon at night I saw a single yellow light. And when you see a light like that, it's like uh, you think there's a ship and that's a place where you're not supposed to have ships. It's not a you know a ship's uh, sailing route. So I went inside, checked on the radar, nothing. Checked on the AIS, nothing. So I was like uh, getting a bit, bit worried uh, because this could be a pirate if he's not transmitting his uh, you know identity and all that. And then I'm staring at him and then after that there's another light right next to this guy. And he's like, uh, if there are two lights, it means it's a ship bigger than 50 meters okay. or there are two boats, two separate boats. So I went inside and again checked my uh, radar, I checked the AIS and nothing. And now I'm really getting worried because there are two pirates, they'll definitely see I'm the only guy and he'll come for me. I kept staring, 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 really scared and uh, what I see is the moon comes out like that. Oh. So I see this tip of the moon and this tip of the moon and the entire crescent comes out right at the horizon. Yeah, and in this race, I saw, I was leaving Cape Town yeah. and I saw the full moon, you know, the, this bigger moon, full moon, red in color, orange in color, rising just behind Table Mountain. And you can see the silhouette of Table Mountain right behind the moon. Okay. Besides that, what were the other dangers of being at the sea, the wind and the waves, I presume? Uh, personally, I didn't see any danger. Uh, I mean, except things like falling overboard or being attacked by waves or something or having a collision, but yeah, it's not so dangerous.